Welcome to Meet the Candidates, the local election forum from Pioneer PBS. This season, we asked every candidate the same list of questions to learn more about what type of legislator they will be if elected. In this episode, we will meet candidates from Minnesota Senate District 15. District lines have changed since the 2020 census. District 15 is made up of Lack of Parle, Yellow Medicine, Lyon, Redwood, Brown, and Blue Earth counties. Major cities include New Ulm, Marshall, Redwood Falls, and Granite Falls. To find out which district you live in, visit mnvotes.org. And now, let's meet the candidates. We will start with a DFL candidate, Anita Gall. Thank you for this opportunity to be here today. My name is Anita Gall, and I am running for the Minnesota State Senate, District 15. I am a teacher, an author, and an historian. I grew up on my family's farm in Bu on Buffalo Ridge in Murray County, near the town of Chandler. Then I graduated from high school and I left the area to attend college. I obtained my PhD in history from the University of Iowa in 2009. I then returned to the area and now I am now a history instructor at Minnesota West Community and Technical College. I live in Marshall with my husband and three school aged children. Why am I running for the Minnesota State Senate? Like you, I am frustrated. I am frustrated by all the hate and division. I am frustrated by the inability of our legislators to get things done. I am frustrated by the partisan politics. Growing up on my family's farm, I was taught not to just complain about things, but to do something about them. So that's what I'm doing. I do not sit around complaining. I try to do something about it. I do not walk away from the table when the clock strikes midnight. I stay until the job is finished. I am a person who works hard and gets things done. As my father and grandfather would frequently remind me, work and work hard. I believe it's time we had a new voice representing the people of this district, a person who can bridge the divide and doesn't walk away when the going gets tough, a person who listens to her constituents instead of the dictates of her party, a person who brings youth, energy, and enthusiasm to the job, that person is me. Why do you want to be the senator for your district? As I said in my opening statement, I am fed up with the political divide in our society. I am tired of the partisanship. I am tired of the hate and division. I am frustrated by the inability of our current political leaders to work together, to compromise, and to put aside their differences in order to get things done for the people of this district and the state of Minnesota. The last legislative session ended with Senate Republicans walking away and leaving major funding bills on the table. They walked away, refusing to negotiate any farther, and so these bills never made it to the governor's desk to be signed into law. These bills could have used some of the $9 billion budget surplus to fund our schools, to provide money for our nursing homes and care facilities, and to provide more funding for our law enforcement agencies. But instead of putting aside party politics, Senate Republicans looked to their own interests and the dictates of their party and refused to move on these bills. Instead of putting the needs of their constituents and the needs of the people of Minnesota ahead of their own selfish wants, they failed us by walking away and refusing to fund vital needs and services that could have helped our communities. That is unacceptable. If our current leaders won't work together and won't stay until the job is finished, then I say it's time for them to leave. It's time to vote in new people who will negotiate, who will stay even after the clock strikes midnight in order to finish the job, and who will listen to their constituents instead of playing political games. That's why it's time to vote out the incumbent and send a new voice to represent the people of District 15 in the Minnesota Senate. Out with the old and in with the new, I say. What are your priorities for the next legislative session? Well, my first priority is to pass a budget bill, one of the most basic things a legislator is supposed to do. 
The inability to do this in the last legislative session left organizations, communities, and cities in this district, it left them in the lurch, scrambling to find money to fund basic operations and services that enable our communities and our institutions to function. Nine billion dollars was left on the table, which could have been used for public safety, for our schools, for our nursing homes, all of which provide vital services in our communities. A second priority is protecting women's reproductive freedom and the choice when and if to start a family. We all know that reproductive freedoms are under attack all over this country. Currently in Minnesota, women and families still have these freedoms, but there are those who want to change the laws in Minnesota to restrict women's access to basic reproductive health care and her bodily autonomy. I will be a fierce advocate to preserve, protect, and defend the reproductive freedom that women and families currently have in Minnesota. A third priority is to defend voting rights for all and to block any attempts to make it harder to vote. There is a movement afoot in this state to pass more voting restrictions to make it harder for people to vote. This is ridiculous. I am proud that Minnesota has some of the highest voter turnout rates of any state in the entire nation. This is because we have an exemplary voting system already in place. We also have a secure voting system as audit after audit at both the local, county, precinct, and even at the state level have repeatedly shown. Our voting system is secure. And as they say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. What unique perspective do you bring to the Minnesota House? My unique perspective, and one that I've emphasized over and over in my campaign, is that I am a connector. I'm the type of person who can bring people together, who can connect them, and bridge this divide. I am a farm kid who has lived in the big city and has returned to her rural roots. I can bridge the divide between urban and rural. For much of my life, I voted Republican, but now I'm a Democrat. I understand the worldview of each party, and I can bridge the divide between them. I can bring different groups and different people together to talk about the issues that affect us all. Farmers, business people, liberals, conservatives, indigenous communities, new Americans, young, old, straight, LGBTQ. Everybody counts. Everybody matters in this district. And I want to hear from everyone, because I will listen to everyone. I want everyone not just to be in the room, but to have a seat at the table when important matters are under discussion or important legislation is under consideration. A second unique perspective I bring to the Minnesota Senate is my experience as an educator. I understand the challenges that our teachers face every day. I understand the important role our schools play in our communities. I will be a fierce advocate for fully funded schools. Education has provided me with many opportunities in my life, and I want to make sure that children in this district, indeed in the entire state of Minnesota, have the same educational opportunities that I had. A third unique perspective that I bring is that I am a historian. I have a thorough knowledge of Minnesota's past, and we all know that the past is how we got here today. The historical knowledge will serve me well as a legislator, for I will be able to contribute an historical perspective to the discussion. I think we could all use more historians at the table when we have important discussions. So I look forward to contributing my knowledge and expertise. What is your vision for the future of Minnesota? My vision is to make Minnesota an open and welcoming state for all. As an historian, I know that Minnesota has a tradition of welcoming immigrants and refugees and new Americans. I want to see this tradition continue, to work on making things easier, not harder, for them to move here, buy homes and start businesses here, to find employment here, to send their children to school here. Immigrants, refugees, and new Americans are not a drain on our society and economy, but they enrich it in every way, so let's continue to make Minnesota a welcoming state. But as a historian, I also know that we fall short to, to be a truly accepting state. 
our native communities can attest to the fact that Minnesota historically has not treated them kindly or with the respect they deserve as original caretakers of this land. We need to acknowledge and listen to them and to honor their contributions. We also need to do better when it comes to our minority populations and in particular students of color in our schools. We know that in Minnesota, there is a persistent achievement gap between white and non-white students. We need to continue to pursue strategies and programs that close this gap once and for all. All of Minnesota students need and deserve the best education possible, and I will work to make that a reality. Finally, an open and welcoming state means that our LGBTQ community also is recognized, acknowledged, and made to feel welcome whether that be in our schools, our communities, or in our workplaces. Discriminatory practices and attitudes need to stop. And a welcoming and open Minnesota means that all persons, no matter how they identify, feel safe in our communities. And now, a closing statement. Thank you again for this opportunity to be here. I appreciate it. We can keep electing the same people into office but the incumbent who currently holds this seat seems incapable of doing his job or finding solutions to the problems that people in our district face. He and his Republican colleagues walked away from the table and refused to negotiate anymore when the going got tough during budget negotiations during the most recent legislative session. There's a saying that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. Electing the same legislators over and over again and expecting different results like a functioning legislature seems like insanity. As I stated before, it's time we had a new voice representing the people of this district in the Minnesota Senate. A person who can bridge the divide and doesn't walk away when the going gets tough. A person who listens to her constituents instead of the dictates of her party a person who brings youth, energy, and enthusiasm to the job. My life experiences make me uniquely qualified to do this. I can bridge the partisan divide and the rural-urban divide because I've been on both sides. I am an educator who understands the needs of our schools. I understand the challenges that families faced, the rising cost of health care, the difficulty of finding good childcare, and the need to defend the reproductive freedom that women need to have in order to make the best choices for their families. I think it's time that you vote for Anita Gall for the Minnesota State Senate District 15. You can learn more at anitayourvote.com. And remember, Anita Your Vote on November 8th. Thank you very much. You can find more information online about Anita Gall at her website, anitayourvote.com. Next, the Republican candidate, Gary Dames. Well, good evening, and I would like to thank Pioneer Public Television for holding this uh, event. I certainly do appreciate it. I'm Senator Gary Dames. I'm in my fourth term in the Senate, currently serving Senate District 16, which will soon be Senate District 15. I was born and raised in uh, rural Redwood Falls, Clements, Minnesota. I graduated from the University of Minnesota, a degree in ag business and economics. I am married to my wife, Barb, for 46 years. We have two children and two grandchildren, and I'm a fiscal and social conservative. I've owned and operated the Dames and Search Agency for 26 years, and I retired from that in 2012. I, during that time, I served on several boards, commissions, and organizations within the community. 2008, I was elected to the Redwood County Board of Commissioners. And in 2010, I was elected to, to the Minnesota Senate for my first term. Currently in the Minnesota Senate, I serve on the Agricultural Policy and Finance Committee, where I'm the vice chair. I serve on the uh, Commerce Policy and Finance Committee, where I am the chair. I serve on the Housing Policy and Finance Committee, and, and also serve on the uh, uh, bonding committee or capital investment committee. My, priority, my priorities in the Minnesota Senate have been to make sure that we pass good legislation, have a balanced budget, and make sure that that legislation is good for everybody as much as we possibly can, but especially rural Minnesota. Uh, rural Minnesota is, uh, we we're losing representation at the state capitol all the time. 
And so I wanna make sure that we do everything we can to make sure that our people in rural Minnesota are represented. And with that said, uh, my priorities are basically what we're hearing, we're knocking on doors, crime, inflation, and education. And with that said, I ask for your vote on November 8th. Why do you wanna be the Senator for your district? The reason I'd like to continue to represent the people in Senate District 15 at the Minnesota Capitol is when I look back at the opportunities that I have been given throughout my lifetime, be it, be it education, be it business, be it whatever, I've had some really great opportunities and I wanna make sure that our children, our grandchildren, and future generations have those same opportunities. And that's very important to me. A lot of people think that if you're in the Senate or the House that you go to the Capitol for five months a year and that's all that that's the end of your job. Uh, it's really surprising, but the biggest part of our job is probably con constituent services. And I make it a habit to do everything I can to make it myself accessible to the constituents. We do a lot of town hall meetings out in the district. I hold a lot of meetings throughout the district with various organizations and groups. And another part of that outreach is working with individuals that are having issues or trouble with government programs and things like that where we can help them get connected to the right people, maybe eliminate some red tape, things like that. That's been very important. I also think that my values and policy, policy positions uh, bring a lot of uh, benefit to the district. And my goal is always to have Minnesota be the best place that people can live work and raise a family. I think that's very important. My background of proven leadership, trusted experience, strong values and common sense and fiscal responsibility give me a lot of advantage and give me a lot of help when I serve in the Senate. What are your priorities for the next legislative session? Well, thank you for the question. Uh, there's a several priorities for the next session. It seems as the government, as the government continues to grow, and things continue to happen, there get to be more and more issues that become higher level issues. I think some of the top ones right now are certainly inflation. Uh, people are realizing that their, their salaries aren't going up as fast as what inflation is. So basically what it amounts to is the paycheck they got eight months ago versus the paycheck they get today will buy them about eight and a half percent less groceries or less fuel or pay that much less rent. And that stuff has to be paid. And so it's putting the real, it's putting real bind on a lot of our constituents and a lot of our folks that are, are uh, working are having some real trouble making ends meet. So that's certainly an issue. Education, education is a great equalizer for our folks. And so we need to make sure that we have equity in education finance throughout uh, all of the state for all of the students. Taxes, we need to have some tax reform, including tax reform in Social Security, taxing on Social Security reform on the taxation that the low and middle income people are paying an in individual income tax, that has to be looked at. And there are other property taxes and things that we'll be dealing with that have to be looked at. Next year is a budget year, and so we need to make sure that we have a balanced budget that's mandated by the, uh, by the uh, state statute statutes, so that has to be done but we need to make sure that we do this in a way that uh, we're making sure that what we fund is funded because of what they're accomplishing and not funded just by adding another number of dollars to the budget. So uh, another thing that has to be in that budget is certainly healthcare. We've got some real serious issues with healthcare in the rural nursing homes, assisted living and the homes for the disabled. And a lot of that has to do with the Medicaid payments that we receive. And we need to make sure that we have more e e equity in the amount of dollars that a Medicaid is being paid in rural Minnesota versus the Twin Cities. What unique perspective do you bring to the Minnesota Senate? Well, I think one of the, I think there are several things that I bring to the Minnesota Senate that have certainly helped me be a better Senator. Uh, certainly my background. I came from an agricultural background, a rural background. I have lived in various communities. I've lived in rural Minnesota majority of my life, but uh, there was a time period when I lived in St. Paul and Minneapolis, and then I lived in Denver, Colorado for a while. So I think having lived in various communities, and uh, I think I have a very good understanding of how rural Minnesota operates. I think my experience as a business owner and county commissioner helped me uh, when we get into negotiations and get into putting bills and issues together, I think that helps me there. I certainly think I've been very fortunate in the leadership opportunities I've been given. 
uh, through the local community organizations where I've been on those and been a leader, uh, committees, uh, commissions, and different boards. I've been had the opportunity to be on those boards and learned a lot, and in many cases in their leadership team. I also think that it gives me the ability to work in a bipartisan manner, and that's very important. You gotta reach across the aisle to get things done. And there's some times that you just can't make that happen, but the majority of the time, probably 90% of the bills we pass are passed with a bipartisan support, and we need to continue to work at that. The other thing I think that I really bring to the Senate, uh, especially for me in rural Minnesota, is my ability and strength to fight for what's best for rural Minnesota, and I think that's very important. What is your vision for the future of Minnesota? Well, I feel we need to create a state where people want to work, to live, and raise a family in a friendly environment. And I think to do this, we have to create an atmosphere of safety in our communities. We have to have tax policy that rewards people for working, and education funding that treats all students equally. We need to provide jobs for people to support themselves and build the workforce that's necessary for our local businesses who need those employees. We must also provide a safety net for people that are unable to work, are handicapped in the elderly. And I think that those are the things that uh, we really need to take a look at. We need to make a Minnesota a place that people are proud of, that they want to work, they want to raise their families, and they can get an education and have good jobs. And now, a closing statement. In closing, I would like to thank the Pioneer TV for hosting this event. I'd also like to thank the residents of Senate District 16 for giving me the opportunity to serve as your Senate, serve as your Senator at the Capitol for the past 12 years. My record in the Senate shows that I work hard to reach across the aisle to accomplish cooperation and compromise. I would appreciate the opportunity to continue to represent Senate District 15 in the state senate and i ask for your vote on november 8th thank you good evening and god bless you can find more information online about gary dames at his website damesforsenate.com learn more about voting how to register and what district you live in by visiting the minnesota secretary of state website at mnvotes.org remember election day is tuesday november 8th Thank you for watching Meet the Candidates on Pioneer PBS.